Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. I'm Davia Chambers, and I'll take you through this afternoon's press conference. Addressing the media this week are the Secretary of the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment, and Sustainable Development, Assemblyman Nathisha Pantin, Assistant Secretary in the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and Urban Development, Assemblyman Joel Sampson, and the Director of the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, Mr. Alan Stewart. So at this time, I'll hand over to Mr. Stewart, who will begin this afternoon's press conference. Mr. Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, all of Tobago, and the wider listening public across wherever you are with an interest of what is happening on this greatest little island on the planet. Um, truly, the tenacity of our beautiful island has been tested over the past 50 days. Uh, you may recall just around um, 7.22 in the a.m. on the 7th of February, the island of Tobago was grossly impacted, um, going through an experience of what some may describe as shock and awe. Um, at day 50, I am very pleased to report that we have made significant strides in that our objectives um, are well in place and we have achieved substantially those goals that we would have set concerning this event that disrupted the island and impacted the, the economy, the social economy of the, 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 the working class and, and the entire economy as a matter of fact in some aspect, especially the fishing industry. Um, we have seen to date that there has been some changes. I mentioned some of the goals that we would have reached in that the schools are, that were impacted are reopened. Um, roadways that were blocked uh, are now reopened. We have seen a scaling back on the activities in the Scarborough area, uh, whereby the 15 kilometers of um, impacted shoreline across the um, Atlantic shoreline has been cleared significantly. Um, is that all? Um, there are some emerging challenges that we still are dealing with and I want to point out that of the currently we are dealing with the waste management issue which is very very important to us as to how we manage the waste that has been extracted of that of hydrocarbon. In addition to that, we have seen the complexity of the mixture of sargassum, which we are going through one of those rough seasons with sargassum seaweed. Um, it requires a particular type of posture, whereby we move the, we separate the hydrocarbon um, that has been affected from that of the regular sargassum. So enlarge the sargassum plan or the sargassum response plan is now in effect. Um, we have had some technical discussions today as to how we can treat with it, how going forward, you know, um, vendors are in the space and they have their own, they have the business uh, accruement to some of this and therefore they think in a particular way and we have to guide the process as to how we treat with this degree of waste. At the landfill also we have seen the the disposition of the um, hydrocarbon products that will move to the landfill. We recognize that space has been a very important area of managing this type of waste, a waste that has pollutants and has been contaminated in, in such a manner that um, anything that the, the hydrocarbon have come into contact with se severely allow for a particular type of disposal. I did mention the scaling back. The scaling back is that the intensity of the workforce has significantly been reduced. Uh, we had over 100 and, uh, uh, close to 140 persons operating in the field on a daily basis. That has been reduced significantly to now 60 persons. We also will see a transition in the coming days and weeks whereby um, CPEP workers uh, will be engaged in a particular manner to assist with those um, deposit that may show up on our shoreline. I did remark in some previous discussions that um, the expert would have pointed out to us that this is not a 
a sprint, it is a marathon, and um, hydrocarbon will be popping up every now and again on your shorelines. Um, do we need the, the, the vast equipment and manpower? No. So this is where we bring in CPEP, uh, with who will be has the responsibility for those areas, and they will be trained in a way as to how to treat with the hydrocarbon, how to dispose of it, how to take care of it, picking it up, the necessary PPEs that is required, and the techniques used for, for, um, for collection. So those things we look forward to in the upcoming days. Um, we are at a stage where we are trimming the, there's a definition for what is squeaky clean and what is relatively okay in terms of the shorelines. For example, we look at the 15 kilometers distance and that was divided up into eight zones. Those zones have changed in terms of the priority areas based on the amount of cleaning that would have took place. And therefore, in the Scarborough area, why we may claim it as being squeaky clean, you've seen white surf all again along the beaches. You don't want a visitor leaning on the I love Tobago sign and walking away with hydrocarbon matters on his um, apparel. So we take that into consideration. But in the areas such as um, Coved and Petruchu and those areas all along the shoreline, uh, we are using a different approach. Um, so we will see changes. We will see the ability of um, treating with the coastline in these, with this variability. Last but not least, I want to speak about the, the salvaging. The salvaging ex exercise begun. Um, that is our ground zero. And we have seen up to today utilizing the UAV technology we are able to see the activities that the TNT salvage is undertaking, not just in collecting the, um, the hydrocarbon at sea, but also the cargo of the vessel. You know, it's a terminology that they use, whatever is in the contents of the vessel, they consider it cargo. And therefore, they are treating with that. The objective is to bring it to shore um, before it goes to its final disposition. So that activity will begin very soon. Right now, they are doing the necessary tapping into the vessel and doing the necessaries in preparation for bringing what they may perceive to be additional hydrocarbon that is lodged within the vessel itself. I wish to pause here now. I wish us well going forward. And let me thank those of you who have been involved in this exercise so far. We are a little way off, but we will get there very, very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Alan Stewart, Director of the Tobago Emergency Management Agency for that update. At this time, the Assistant Secretary of the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and Urban Development, Assemblyman Joel Sampson, will now address you. Mr. Sampson. Thank you very much, Ms. Chambers. Good afternoon to the viewing public and all our online viewers. I'm just here to give some updates on URP and some of the achievements that we have gained since September 2023. As you know, previously when I was on the post-exec media briefing, I spoke to some commitments about increased wages, also other areas where we would give them some benefits. And I stood true to those commitments where we see persons at URP are enjoying these benefits today. Recently, a lot of workers would have gone on vacation, their first paid vacation leave in the history of URP. So an entity that has been around for over 10, 15 years, workers have finally enjoyed some benefits that they did not enjoy previously. So these workers are now entitled to vacation leave, sick leave, casual leave, they're entitled to bereavement leave. Work female workers now can go on maternity leave. So this administration that is very caring, you see we have honored our promises that we would have made to the workers at URP. And we are seeing that these workers now are motivated by the works that they have been doing across the space. You know, there are a lot of works happening. If you look at rehabilitation and revitalization, revitalization works. If we look at the Scarborough Boardwalk, which was in a dilapidated state for some time, you know, we did some revitalization works on that for the carnival period which is to be completed in short time. We have just received the amount of stain that is required to restain the boardwalk. 
So you should see some works there to complete that shortly. There is also the park, I think it's the Lennox Phillips Park, that's up at up, Uptown just before FCB, where we also revitalize, which is now a major attraction in Scarborough. The water fountain is back working, the map is visible once again, so persons can go there and see what there is to offer. Also recently we started some rehabilitation works at the boardwalk in Boko, where we have started replacing the pitch pine with teak, making it more durable and long lasting. URP has been performing excellently over the past couple of years since this administration has come into office. And I must thank the workers for their dedication and their commitment to this drive that we have where we will make Tobago the greatest little island on the planet. The unemployment relief program was established with the intention of providing socio-economic relief to the less fortunate in our society. Through the years since its inception, the unemployment relief program has cemented itself as a medium through which one can access resources to further advance themselves and enhance their surroundings. This is done through several initiatives which garners a sense of personal development and fosters community pride. These initiatives are meted out to the public throughout various units such as construction unit, environmental unit, furniture workshop, Blemen concrete products, and the agricultural unit. I will just go into a bit of detail about these units. The construction unit provides a range of services catered to assisting with the development throughout the island of Tobago. So there are core projects, there are social intervention projects, and there are self-help projects. Currently, in the core projects ongoing, we have construction of toilets and bathroom at Signal Hill, we have construction of retaining walls at Church Street Mason Hall, Rose Hill Mason Hall, Lamy Road, Argyle, just to mention a few. In the social intervention projects that we have ongoing, we have septic and soak away projects going on at Boko Road, Kambi. We have roofing and rendering happening at Canaan, just to mention a few. Also, there is the environment unit. The Environment Unit caters to the beautification and maintenance of our public spaces such as historical sites, parks and coastal front line and also aids in community cleanup efforts and relief work. Currently we have teams located across the island coming from Pirates Bay Charlotteville to as far down as Crown Point. The Furniture Workshop as part of the revenue unit, the furniture workshop produces low-cost items to the general public. Products range from small items such as wooden spoons, trays and footstools to larger items such as windows, countertops, doors, office and household furniture. Our most recent product to be introduced to the public has been caskets which aim to reduce the financial burden placed on our loved ones. The Blemen Concrete Production Unit as part of the revenue unit, this unit produces items such as plant pots, park benches, sinks, bird pots, and fountains aimed at beautifying both personal and public spaces. Then there is the agricultural unit. This unit aims to assist in the pre preservation and sustainability of the, the island's natural resources, as well as the marketing and distribution of indigenous agro-based products of Tobago. With the focus on food sustainability and security, the Agricultural Unit has taken the initiative to make several donations of seedlings and even produce the various schools, homes for the age, and to the general public in an attempt to raise awareness and promote healthy eating at economic cost. The agriculture sector has seen major growth since our partnership with the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment and Sustainable Development. We continue to work on several projects such as the Small Ruminant Project, the Greenhouse Project and Community Gardening Program. Expect to see more collaborations between URP and the Division of Food Security in the coming days as we work to together in keeping the mandate of making URP more economically viable through our agricultural sector, thus fueling the administration's mandate of greater food security. 
I must say, under the guidance of Secretary Charles Pantin, the Secretary for Food Security, our vision of working together has seen growth, and our aim is to trade knowledge and rebuild confidence holistically in this sector. So this is just an update on where we are and where we want to go. So I thank you, listening public, and I would be back again to give you more updates as to what's the direction we will head in come 2025. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Secretary Assemblyman Joel Sampson for your update. I now invite to address you, members of the media, the Secretary of the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment and Sustainable Development, Assemblyman Natisha Charles Pantin. Greetings to everyone, members of the media or online viewers. First, let me congratulate uh, Mr. Alan Stewart for the excellent work he has been doing with the oil spill response. And to Assemblyman Mr. Joel Sampson, excellent work across at the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and Urban Development. Yeah, congratulations for all the hard work he has been doing and within his electoral district. So my report would begin from October 2023 to date, to March. Yeah? And first, let me announce that there will be a wage increase from $173 to $235 for access roads workers within this fiscal year. And they will be brought on par with the other workers, um, you know, under the collective agreement, yes? Yeah? So they will be entitled to all the benefits, yes? Yeah? So this fiscal, you will experience a wage increase. Barbados Bay Fishing Facility, Fish Facility. Um, there was a recommissioning of the facility, a brand new, it looks like a brand new facility. You, you're gonna see um, upgrades as you drive along that Studley Park area. Um, Barbados Bay is just um, at the entrance of the road to go up at the landfill. And on the right hand side of the road, you will see that, um, you know, that building was reconfigured to fit the needs of our Tobago fisher folk in that area and uh, commendations to all the teams that worked hard, the assistant secretary of the division, assemblyman Nigel Tate, and all the stakeholders in that area, um, alongside the area representative, assemblyman Megan Morrison. We all came together and ensured that that facility um, is up to standard, yeah? So, we announced recently um, the Safari 3. A lot of the vessels when we got into office were um, you know, in a state of disrepair and abandoned. So we recently renewed and restored the Safari 3 boat back to continue the safeguarding of the Boca Reef Marine Park. So you will see frequent patrols um, around no man's land, um, across that area from Buku all the way around to Pigeon Point. Yeah, so congratulations to the officers, all the technical teams, um, the administrator, excellent job. We are managing our limited resources in the best way. Recently, we partnered with the Boca Reef Trust and a company called Bocalis to experiment with a modular life system to renew uh, the coral, the growth of coral at the Boca Reef. Yes, yeah, so we demarcated an area and experiments will be held in that area across by no man's land to ensure that we see reef growth within a two year period. So 1.5 to two years. And we know it takes millions of years for corals to grow. Yes, yeah, so we continue to try to restore our coral reef ecosystem in order to ensure that the fisher folk, they have um, fish for the coming years. 
our our giant African snail team, they continue to do their daily visits in several communities, Friendsfield, Kala Hall, all the way to um, areas in the West. So we continue to identify those communities that are under uh, the giant African snail infestation. And the division continues, along with the community um, participation, yeah, we continue to assist in pest management. So please follow the page, the Division of Food Security page, and you will see uh, Ms. Kuhn Kuhn explaining how to eradicate the snail. It's not just, you know, the see the snail and you, you, you know, you, you kill it. There's an entire process to ensure that we don't have um, further or promote further infestation in different areas. Recently, we had uh, the testing of embryo transplant demonstration for Blemming Sheep Multiplication and Research Project in collaboration with Cuban experts from the UN's South South Corporation. So we had the Cubans coming into Tobago and training our officers and our, veterinar our vets, yeah, our veterinarians um, on how to do uh, embryo trans, um, transfer so that we can improve the quality of stock that we have in Tobago and to increase the quality of stock that farmers usually access from our government stock farms. We recently acquired a veterinary ultrasound machine to assist in diagnostic capabilities for animals under this division. I'm also happy to announce uh, our Women in Agriculture and Natural Resources program. We had a launch um, recently, yeah, and this launch was aimed to empower women in agriculture and natural resources and to address those disparities and to create a more inclusive environment for all the stakeholders. So you will see a lot of programs being rolled out to ensure that we support all the stakeholders under our division. So it would not only be focused around farmers and fisher folk, but we have agro-processors, we have um, beekeepers, all the different stakeholders, even people who are into forestry that plant trees, we will be providing assistance for you. So look out in the coming months, we will be building out different arrangements to accommodate your craft. As we like to say in the division, agriculture is a science and a business. So we want to ensure that we promote and protect your livelihood. Consultations with TADCO for the launch of small ruminant development project um, that we are partnering with, with Assemblyman uh, Mr. Samson, Joel Samson, to purchase 1,000 lambs and 500 goat kids for our, our government stock farm. Yeah? So we are first appealing to the Tobago um, small ruminant farmers to participate in this project to supply a uh, 1,000 lambs and 500 goat kids. Yeah, and this project places emphasis on augmenting the parent breeding flock of sheep and goats in Tobago. Yeah? Solar-powered bird whaler acquisition. So we recently acquired two bird whalers, and this, this entire thing started because of the research that we would have been doing in the field. A lot of the cocoa farmers and other farmers in that um, Goldsboro area, right up to Roxboro, they would have complained about bird pests, right, such as the parrots and cockroaches. So we brought in some solar whalers with the assistance of Cardi, Digicel, and Shell. And this is aimed at reducing crop losses caused by pests such as the cockroaches and parrots in the cocoa sector. So we could look forward to having a better um, managed cocoa industry in Tobago. So we will continue to work. Uh, congratulations to the technical teams again, the Mega Farm Committee headed by Mr. James Strutman. His team, they are working very hard to develop different initiatives under the Mega Farming Program. Also, during the period October to now, we would have executed several things like the farmer's market, um, different competitions uh, for, for you know, schools, uh, spoken word, traditional poetry, seminar series to educate on commodity preparation, such as how to prepare smoke fish and the deboning of the lionfish. We held our first horticulture show for World Food Day celebrations 
And after that great response on the first day, we kept it a second day. Also, that beautiful Botanic Gardens Christmas Glitz, where most of Tobago ended up in the Botanical Gardens. We had over 11,000 visitors for the two-week period. And it was such a lovely experience, having the movie night and different activities, storytelling. So we continue to embrace families in our parks and open areas. So look forward to different user policies for not only the Scarborough Botanic Gardens, but you will see um, user policies for Corland Park, for Little Tobago, and other parks and open areas that are under the division. We also had a successful lamb fest. It was so successful that people ate 5,000 pounds of lamb meat in two hours. So it was a two hour lamb festival. <laughs> and that is why we, we are now trying to you know, boost the small ruminant industry. So in preparation for the lamb fest, and of course in preparation for the mega farming initiative. Uh, so we are working on developing different animals, not only small ruminants, as well as we, you will see some other initiatives being rolled out under the crop, crop um, production department. But we want to move the lamb fest from just two hours to an entire day. So we are trying to put in the work and we have our teams leading the way. Yeah? Also, we continue to clear the backlog of um, services required from tractor pool. Right, we we'll restarted um, again from the 18th of this month. Right, so you will see those tractors rolling on the highway, getting to the farms. Right, this is a, in an effort to continue clearing that backlog, and of course, we're starting to accept new applications uh, very soon. Yeah, under the Department of Crop Production, we have. 967 registered home gardeners to date and we are appealing to Tobagonians. It is such a, a beautiful feeling to be able to feed yourselves, right? So it doesn't matter how small your space is, come to the division, request assistance from our lovely team at the Home Gardening Unit. They work very hard. So please come to the division. You will get the start that you need in order to have a successful home garden at the back of your yard, yeah? And the division is working on several projects to be rolled out. It's not limited to this, but we are, you know, working feverishly in order to set up a lot of um, projects on the island and to refurbish a lot of um, up things that were abandoned, yeah? So the Culloden Fish Facility, it's in a state of disrepair. Right, I'm sure you would have seen the tender go out for that. So that, that uh, we will be f um, refurbishing the, the Culloden Fish Facility. The Buku, the Buku Training Center, that training center was abandoned for over 10 years, almost 20 years actually, right? So we intend to refurbish that building and provide training opportunities as well as for fisher folk and other stakeholders, but it's also going to be a dormitory. So if people need to come up from Trinidad or anywhere else in the world to do training under the division, we will have accommodation at that site very soon. Also, the upgrades to the Boko facility, training facility, right? We intend to have somewhat of a what you call it, somewhere where our stakeholders can come and get advice on how to, you know, fill out certain forms and, you know, sort of hold their hands towards getting grant funded. Because a lot of times people take the forms, but they are unable to fill them out and, you know, to access different services. So at that site, that site would be earmarked to provide a lot of support in the coming future. Upgrades will be done to the Roxborough Fish Facility. Some upgrades to the Buku, train, the Buku Fish Facility as well. The renaming of the Kendall Farm School to the Tobago Agricultural Research Institute. That will happen in the, in the, in the next two months. And of course, with the accompanying upgrades, and we will also be labeling those stations linked to different activities under agriculture as TARI participative units. So these stations will now fit into the wider, you know, concept. 
So if we are doing livestock training and at the facility, you will be able to do field visits at the different sites, Hope Farm, Blemming, Runnymede Breeding Unit, Charlottesville Breeding Unit. So those units will be targeted, the TARI participative units. And the same goes for, you know, training in crops and, and, and other um, things. So you'll have the plant tissue culture. All these places will be tagged according to the different types of training that you will receive at the Tobago Agricultural Research Institute. The construction of the lockers and a storage space at the Charlottesville Fish Facility. We're working on that. And also, we will be engaging in initiatives to increase productivity on the stations and on the government and private farms. Because what we have, we have a lot of people that have land. And even though we're going to do land distribution, we want to ensure productivity and not just people having assets that they cannot use. So we are working together, the division and the, the division's companies, the committees, we are all coming together to develop a plan, a model that we can work with in order to increase productivity. Yeah, so we, we no longer just want to give persons land, but you must be set up in a way that you can produce, right? So if, we, we, if, if, for example, there's a disaster in Trinidad, right? And Trinidad has to, you know, feed itself. It wouldn't take its, its resources and send it to Tobago. We would be left behind. And if there's a disaster in Tobago, we wouldn't be able to feed ourselves, yeah? So <laughs> we have to embark on projects to increase productivity in Tobago. So we will be working with the, the division of uh, infrastructure, quarries and the environment, and sorry, and <laughs> urban development, and of course, um, other divisions that share similar mandate, that shares a similar mandate as the division. We continue to work together as an administration to ensure that we create the environment that we need in Tobago, uh, that type of productivity to ensure that Tobago can feed itself, yeah? So I want to thank you, uh, Tobago. Thank you to everyone that would have contributed um, to our mandate at the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment and Sustainable Development. I want to thank all the stakeholders as well for, all, for participating in all the initiatives, right? So we will return again to update you on all the initiatives, uh, both uh, the Assemblyman and I, and of course, uh, the Mr. Alan Stewart, right, from TIMA, continue the excellent work. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Assemblyman mm -hmm. Charles Panton, for your presentation. Members of the media, you are now invited to ask questions. As usual, once you have a question to pose, you just indicate by raising your virtual hand. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. Good afternoon, Elizabeth. Good afternoon, Davia, and everyone on the head table. This question, well, not a question, but this is just for Mrs. Natisha Charles Panton to look into. I don't know if she could. I just got a call from someone from the food hub complaining of a lack of water since Sunday. So I don't know if you can look into that. And also, I have received complaints. I don't know if you are looking into this one at the Louisdor Nursery. Several um, areas there needs to be refurbished. I know you spoke about refurbishment works at other facilities, so I don't know if you can look into those. Okay, so um, what happened before I entered into office, there was some discrepancy in terms of material being bought um, paid for but not delivered at, the, at, at Louis Do. And that has um, stopped, you know, further construction at Louis Do. And of course, we had to, you know, follow the legal process in order to get uh, the persons who committed to bringing the material to Louis Do. Right? So it is no fault of the division that we have not continued the upgrade at Louisville, 
but we will continue the upgrades because we would have taken the necessary steps, right, towards um, addressing the matter. Yeah, so thank you for raising the question. And of course, I already messaged uh, someone at TADCO to look into the matter with the water. Thank you, Secretary Charles Panton. Caricia Douglas, TTT, good afternoon, Caricia. Pleasant afternoon, Davia, and the table. Um, I don't know if Secretary Pantin, Charles Pantin, maybe mentioned it, and I missed it, mm -hmm. as she was speaking about the different um, refurbishment um, plans for the fishing facilities. The Charlottesville fishing facility is one that has been um, talked about. I know a lot of the fisher folk in that area have been clamoring, complaining about the um, situation there. Are you aware of it and what are the plans um, to be put in place to address this long-standing issue? Thank you. Thank you for the question, Ms. Douglas. Yes, the issue is being addressed. And the issue is they actually asked for a storage space for the locker, for the for the gas and upgrades to the lockers. So I can report to you now the mobilization has been paid, so you will see refurbishment of the lockers. As a matter of fact, we're going to remove what's there and put it in concrete, yeah? And of course, we are addressing the matter with the sewage um, in that area. So yes, I am aware and we already actioned a lot of what you're saying. Thanks for the question. Thank you, Secretary Pantin. I'm seeing Elizabeth's virtual hand raised. I don't know if you have another question, Elizabeth, do you? Yes, I do. Okay. This one is for Mr. Samson. It's not a question per se, just for him to look into the situation with URP. We have been getting um, a lot of complaints. I don't know. I know you mentioned that some persons are getting vacation leave, maternity leave. But some persons from URP have complained consistently that some of the outstanding benefits that were promised to them, they have not received it. I don't know if you got those complaints. Some also complained of raises, um, increases, sorry, that the assembly promised. I know you mentioned it, um, that those increases have not um, materialized in terms of to their pay packages. Some persons also complained of the retroactive monies that they were supposed to receive. They have not received it. I don't know if you got those complaints. If you can look into it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Williams, for such. And I did receive a lot of these complaints. I did have conversation with the director of URP, and we are working speedily to resolve these issues. Our executive minute was passed, so there should be no problems. But you know, in everything, there are hiccups when something is new. So these hiccups will be addressed. Also, to the persons in terms of the arrears, the last I know it was at an auditing stage. And when it comes to taxpayers' money, you can't just pay it out willy nilly without any directive or without any checks and balances. So all these things will be addressed in the very near future. As soon as I get some more updates, I will be sure to share that with you, Ms. Williams. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Secretary Sampson, for your response. Do we have any more questions from members of the media? So we don't have any more questions. So on that note, that's how we bring this week's post-executive council media briefing to an end. Thank you so much, Secretary Charles Pantin, Assistant Secretary Sampson, and Mr. Stewart for your presentations. Thank you, members of the media, for your questions. And thank you, our online viewers, for always joining us. I am Davia Chambers saying do have a wonderful afternoon and also have a safe and happy Easter. Take care.